struggles which are taking place today here in South Africa about the need for decolonized education has a long genealogy in African thought. You can go as far back as the 1860s and 1870s when the struggle was for universities to be established in Africa. And uh, the people who were actually championing that, uh, to, to mention a few, is Edward Wilmont Blyden, who was based in Sierra Leone. Uh, Kasley Hayford was based in uh, Gold Coast by then, which is today Ghana. And Hotton, who was also in West Africa, and many others. What is very distinctive about that early agitation for education was that, one, they wanted Africa to have universities. But from that very beginning, they were beginning to say, we want specifically a specific type of a university. And they, Blyden talked, is the first person, I think, to whom we can trace the idea of African university. In the 1860s, he says, we don't want a transplanted university, a university transplanted from Europe into Africa. And uh, he then says, the problem with a transplanted university is that it comes with the race poison. That was, that, was, that was one. Two, he was worried that if the university is transplanted from Europe or America into, into the continent, the second thing which, which it will carry is actually the textbooks. He was worried that the textbooks which were existing and written by Europeans by then, and even today, they always presented the African as a barbarian. A, a heaven, a barbarian, worse than a fool, to say the least. And he says, if we take such text and they bring with them with the university, then it will actually destroy the confidence of the African and it will transform the African into something else. And they, he was saying, we want an education which actually affirms what he termed by then African personality. And he, to him, the education which was supposed to be provided by a university was education which was African in content, uh, African in orientation, African in philosophical orientation. In that way, he, he was saying that type of a university will not actually lead to what we call today alienation, whereby you then distance the person from his or her society, distance the person from his or her language, distance the person from his or her culture. And he says, if that type of a university comes into being, then we are finished. In other words, we become copycats and imitators of other people. And that is not knowledge. That is what, in my language, I will call an epistemicide. An epistemicide is a process whereby you kill other people's knowledges, cultures. And they, that is always attached also to the second problem, which is the problem of linguicide, whereby you then kill the language of the people whom you find. So, so you, can, you can go as far back as 1860s and 18, 1870s for that. But they did not succeed in what they wanted. The universities which then came, the early universities, was Fura Bay College in Sierra Leone. And it came as part and parcel of uh, the, the University of Durham in the United Kingdom. Uh, Achimota College uh, near Accra in Ghana was part and parcel of the University of London. And uh, it means that they failed in getting an African university. What did they go to? Uh, colleges of metropolitan universities in Africa. At least. Those were few who were there. The agitation for more still continued mm -hmm. until after 1945. And after 1945, that's when you have many. You have uh, Makerere, Ipatan. Uh, the, but they come as colleges of the University of London. And they coming as colleges from the University of London, it means the curriculum actually comes from London. The exams are set according to the standards of London. And the assumption was that a, a young person who grew up in Manchester, in, in, in Liverpool, and a young person who grew up in Soweto, they actually must 
imbibe Buddhism knowledge. That, 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 that was the thinking. And that there was a debate even among early Africans by then that some were saying, but if we want the technology of the West, we cannot want the technology and not want the civilization. So in other words, we must take the technology plus the civilization. In other words, destroy our own and accept that. And others, they were saying, no, 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 we want technology, but we don't want the civilization. We have our own civilization. We don't want it to change from being us into something else. And that is the debate which went on until the time of decolonization in the 1960s with the people like Nkrumah, people like Kenyatta and many others coming on stage to argue that the decolonization process is not only a political process. It's decolonization, but at the same time, the decolonization must come also with the decolonization of knowledge. And it means that we need to decolonize the university, which were already on the continent, like the University of Lekon in Ghana, which now is the University of Ghana, oh. Ipadan, Dar es Salaam, and others. They needed to be decolonized. And what the fundamental question which we are facing from that time up to today, what does it mean to decolonize a university? By then, there were initiatives which were taken. Decolonizing a university means, first of all, they then changed the name from the colonial name into, into an indigenous name, like University of Gold Coast becomes University of Ghana. Uh, and uh, secondly, it meant that you are decolonizing by actually then saying the, the vice chancellor must actually be black. The professoriate must actually be black. The students who come in must actually be black. But that's a very minimalist way of, of thinking about decolonization because that you might have Africanized. You might have Africanized, but have you decolonized? In other words, if you bring a professor who is black like me into the university, don't take it for granted that you have already decolonized because you have, pro you have brought a black person. The challenge, the key challenge, is that you bring a person like me who is produced by the same westernized university. I can be black in color, but in terms of my epistemology, my thinking, it might actually be Eurocentric.